Alright, so check this out guys, I could not resist purchasing another one of these Sony Mini Hi-Fi stereos and this one is Mini Hi-Fi Component System MHC GZR77D and I bought this used and you can see there's quite a bit of dust in these speakers. Now the power rating for this stereo is 360 watts RMS that is 180 watts RMS for each left and the right channel. And unlike my old Sony MHC VX7, this one actually plays back DVDs. So you do get DVD playback and then you have MP3 playback, DIVX playback, then you have USB and it also has two cassette decks. Came with two cassettes, I'm not sure what's on it. And if Uncle Google is not wrong, this stereo is from the year 2009. So it's a fairly recent model but it's not that recent so it does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and also does not have NFC. But it does have a nice vacuum fluoro display. I'll turn this on and you guys will be able to see it. But first let's take a look at the back of the stereo, see what we get. Okay so taking a look at the back of the stereo there's a nice big cooling fan. And the way Sony has designed this, this thing kind of sticks out so it's not flush with the body. I think this has been purposely done. You can kind of take this fan shroud out so you unscrew all of these screws and the fan will come out and then you can replace the fan in case the fan dies. Now in terms of connectivity we have the audio in and the video in. I think the stereo can take video in from your set top box and output the video from component video out and also you get the audio through the stereo speakers. Then we have the subwoofer out. I think you'll need a subwoofer with its own amplifier. Then we have the component video out, regular video out, DVD digital audio out connection for the speakers and then the FM and the AM antenna connections. There is no surround sound on this system so you don't have that surround sound connector. And then this is the model number HCD GZR77D, the serial number and then finally we have the voltage selector. And there is a little label on here and judging from this label I think this stereo has been serviced in the past. So that's not a good sign because someone has already been inside here. Now taking a look at the back of the speaker, you can see the model number is SSGZR77D. The speaker is rated at 6 ohms, that's the serial number. And there is no terminal connection on here so the wire goes in directly inside the speaker box. So looking at the speakers, I think what Sony has done is that these two are full range drivers and there is a tweeter inside over there. You can probably see that. So this is a 3 way speaker. And just by looking at these drivers, they look like 5.5 inch or 6 inch drivers. I think the size of both the drivers are the same. I don't know, I would have liked Sony to use a smaller driver on the top and a large driver for the base on the bottom. And here's the remote that goes with the stereo. Unfortunately, it's missing the battery cover, but that's okay. Now, you might be asking what price did I pay for this thing? Well, I paid next to nothing for this stereo. So there has to be a catch, right? Well, the guy told me that the cassette decks do not work, the DVD drive does not work. The only thing that used to work on the system was the USB and the audio in. And he told me since the past few days, even that is not working because when you power the system on, this happens. So the system powers on, it makes this clicking noise, shows eject, and then it turns off. So yeah, that's what happens and this system is not in a working state. So this is why this thing cost me next to nothing. Now I hope to fix this thing for a fairly reasonable price. I'm not gonna take it to Sony, I'm gonna take it apart myself, see what's wrong with it. I think this stereo is going into protect mode because there's something wrong mechanically in the cassette deck. And I think the DVD drive might be just dirty, so I'm gonna clean that out. He did say that the DVD drive used to eject just fine, but whenever you play a CD or a DVD, the video used to skip. So I think the DVD drive is just dirty and there's something wrong with the cassette deck that is making the stereo go into protect mode. So maybe a belt has come loose or something. I hope this is an easy fix because I really don't want to spend much money on this system. I hope to get this thing working in perfect order. So I've done a little bit of googling and I seem to get mixed answers. Some people are suggesting that this is a relay issue. If this is a relay issue, I won't be able to fix it at home. I will have to take it to a local service shop or to Sony service center. And some people are saying that it's a simple issue related with the belt of the cassette deck. If this is a belt issue, I can fix it at home. I can order some belts online and just install the belt myself. 
but yeah it's still doing the same thing even though the cassette decks are open you can see that little thing moves over, move over there and it just turns off so you know what let's take the stereo apart and see what kind of components sony is using i want to see what kind of capacitors sony has put on this system so i took the covers off and right away i can tell you guys that this stereo is built down to a price first off these capacitors this is an fdai cap on the power supply i don't think you can see on the camera but those big capacitors down there are from a brand called Lelon. And Lelon caps are quite cheap, so these are not good quality capacitors. That's a fourth tier capacitor, so let me just zoom in. And yeah, you can see that capacitor brand, Lelon. So I think Sony is cheaping out on these newer systems. The old Sony that I've got, the MHC VX7, which is about 10 years older than this system. That one uses Nippon Chemicon caps, and this one uses cheap quality capacitors. Yeah, what the heck, Sony? And uh, if you take a look over there, you can see the belt has come off. And a lot of people online are suggesting that this problem is only a mechanical problem. And if I put a new belt on this, and it goes in over here, our problems will be solved. And this is the opposite side of the stereo. And it looks like they've erased all the markings on this chip. But from what I can see, this is an NEC quad flat pack. And look at this, they're using a PCB for the wire holder. So that's actually a printed circuit board. They have just screwed it on here. And they're using it as a wire holder for these flat flex cables. Okay, so a little bit of progress. I took apart the top part. So this one houses the cassette decks and I've kind of put the belt back on there. It's still a little bit loose, but this should make this wheel work. And if this is a mechanical issue, let's see if the stereo powers on. But look at what they've done. This is a PCB wire holder wow and all of these caps on this board are all fdai so this one does not seem to have any of these high quality capacitors like nippon chemicon rubicons or nichicons all right so let's see if the stereo powers on and stays powered on okay so no clicking noise i i did see this thing was running and look at that the stereo is staying powered on I think it's reading the DVD or CD, whatever's inside there. Look at that, the CD is also working. Holy crap, this thing turned on. So that means this thing is functional. I have to test the amplifier though. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. This thing is like powering on. But anyways, I'm gonna get the belts replaced because I kind of want this system to be fully functional, including the cassette decks. But yeah, for now, this thing is powering on. Okay, looks like the DVD drive is ejecting, no problem. But as you can see, this thing is just filthy. There is a lot of dust in here. No wonder the DVD drive does not work. It's not able to play back the music. It does recognize that there is a CD and it does show that it's able to play. But when you play it back, it does not work. At least that that is what I was told. I might put a CD cleaner disc on here and see if that makes it work. Okay, so I'm gonna power cycle this stereo off then back on and see if it turns on properly. So power off, you can see the LED is now off. And when I power this thing back on, you'll see that these gears move. So power on. And there you have it. So I think there was nothing wrong with the system. The belt had come off and that was causing the whole stereo to go into this protection mode. So let's power this thing on. You see, no more clicking noises and the stereo powers on just fine. You know what, before I close this, let's actually test out the cassette decks. So I have put those two cassettes back in the cassette deck. So let's see, tape A and B. Okay, so let's try playing tape B. Where's the play button? It looks like it is playing. Yes, it is playing. The speakers are not connected, so I cannot increase the volume, but yes, it is playing. So the only thing that was wrong is that this belt had come off. There's nothing wrong with these belts. Okay, tape A. Let's play this back. See if it works. Yeah, seemed to be working. Alright guys, got the system back together. You can see it's powering on now. No issues. 
and I've also cleaned out these speakers well, somewhat. The dust is like caked on inside there. So unless I take out these grills, that dust is not coming off. And one thing I want to do is check the display because there might be a dead pixel or something. So there's a little key combination that you have to do if you want to check the display. Okay, so if you want to check the display for bad pixels on this stereo, you press and hold the stop button, press and hold the disc 3 button and press display. So stop, disc 3, display. And all the pixels in the display will light up. Yep, that vacuum fluoro display is perfect. Although it's not as colorful as the display on the old MHC VX7, but yeah, it's still a vacuum fluoro display, so that's good. Nowadays, if you buy a Sony Hi-Fi system, they give you that LED display which is tiny. So yeah, cost cutting stuff. And then you also have an LED which goes around here. And that's the USB LED over there. Now, if you want to exit this testing mode, press and hold the display button, stop and disc 3 and it will exit that display test mode. Alright, so now let's play some tunes and hear how the system sounds like. Okay, for music playback, I'll be using my Sony Xperia XZ. Seems fitting to use a Sony phone with a Sony stereo. And these are my EQ settings on the phone. So I have turned up clear bass so that we can pump out maximum bass from the stereo. And the name of the song is The Calling by Fat Rat. This guy is awesome and the song is copyright free so there should be no problems in my video. And by the way guys, if you hear any rattling sounds, that's because of the furniture vibrating. And secondly, if you hear any distortions or any loss in sound quality, that's because of the camera mic not being able to pick up the entire sound range. It does shake the entire room though. So let's begin. And the EQ settings on the stereo, so let's see. Low plus 6 and that is the max. Then mid minus 2 and high plus 6. So these are the only EQ settings available on the stereo. And other than that you get some preset EQ like um, flat, rock. But let's see. But let's keep it on user EQ because I kind of like this setting. This good sound quality. And Z groove is also on. distortion at all in the sound quality at maximum volume this thing is awesome Everything is shaking. This stereo is awesome.
So guys, coming to the sound quality, I kind of like the sound quality of this stereo and the characteristics of the bass that comes out of the system is slightly different compared to the MHC VX7. This one is more punchy. That one has more depth in it. I think I do prefer that older system when it comes to bass. Now I'm not saying that the bass that comes out of this new system is bad or anything. You can feel the furniture and the wall vibrating on the other side of the room and I would like to say that the overall sound quality is quite good and I'm quite pleased with this stereo. Alright, so try playing back an audio CD and sure enough, it does not work. The stereo does play it back but it kind of skips when the song is playing. So I think the lens is dirty. Now I want to test out that USB thing on there because if the USB is functional, there is no point of having a DVD drive on here. Okay, so I've got the stereo set up on my desk and I've connected the stereo's video out to the TV through component. So let's select component. It works. So first thing I want to do before I plug anything in is to check the setup. So the way you enter setup on the system is through this display button. Press the display and you have this setup screen. And let's go to custom setup. And there is really not much on here. The TV type 16 is to 9. That's okay. Screensaver none. DIVX. And this is the speaker setup. You can change the volume level of the speakers. There is no subwoofer on here. So that's pretty much it for the setup. Let's insert the USB and see if we can play songs off of the USB. And I also loaded two video files. I highly doubt it will work, but yeah, let's see. So the USB is in. So yeah, it's just showing those two MP3 files. So it's not even showing up the video files. But that's okay because eventually the stereo will be connected to a smart TV. So let's play back this song and see if it works. So as you can see, the USB playback does work. Okay, so look at this. I deleted the MP3 files of the USB and now it is finally showing the video files that were on the USB drive. So you can either have MP3 files or you can have video files. It's not going to show both the files. Anyways, but it does work. Look at this. It's playing back video from the USB. And even the sound is also quite clear. Now obviously this is not HD, it's not even 720p. This is an SD quality. So let's try a different video file. Let's try this one. And by the way, I use DIVX Converter to convert these files to DIVX Home Theater Profile so that it works in this stereo. Of course, it's not in HD, it's only in SD, but yeah, it's good enough. And if you're viewing the video from a distance, it looks perfectly fine. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos like these and take a look at this. You can use the cassette deck as a stand for your phone or an iPod. Cool, huh? Anyways guys, thank you for watching and do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.